I'm riding, you know, and Father Renee is talking to me and telling me, you know, it's, you're never going to get away with this, you know, you're never going to get away with this, you know. Stephen Murray is being held without bond in connection with the murder of Father Rene Robert. You can see him, look at that, waving and smiling at our cameras. Mr. Murray, you said you're sorry. Do you have anything else to say? Very sorry. If, if anybody really loves Father Rene, they'll forgive me because he was a man of God. This is Stephen Murray, a 30-year-old career criminal who had spent half his life in and out of prison since the age of 11. Stephen is being interrogated by the police regarding the disappearance of Father René Robert. As the detectives uncover the truth about what happened, they will begin to realize that they are talking with a heartless serial killer. I think, I think he needs to be tied up somewhere and tortured to death. Father René Robert, a man known for his love and compassion, had dedicated himself to helping ex-convicts as they transitioned from prison back into society, offering them spiritual guidance and financial assistance. He was well-loved and respected within his community, and was a man who could be relied upon to stay true to his word and always be there when expected. So when Father René fails to show up at church, a community goes on alert. In 2016, Stephen Murray met Father René Robert through his girlfriend, Ashley Shreve, a convicted drug addict who was one of Father René's lost souls. Father René had helped her for over a decade, regularly giving her money whenever she asked for it, which, in turn, led Murray to also taking advantage of his good nature. Five months before the crime, Shreve would land back in prison. But this didn't stop Murray from continuing to abuse Father René's goodwill. On April 12, 2016, Father René Robert was reported missing to officials in St. Augustine, Florida after failing to turn up as expected for a funeral. Later that same day, officers receive a call from Murray's sister, who, having heard about the disappearance, suspects her brother is involved after receiving a strange phone call from him. Twenty-five deputies from the St. John's County Sheriff's Department are sent on the hunt for Stephen Murray, and a high-speed chase ensues but he escapes. One week later, Father Renee's stolen car is found, and Murray is captured and taken into police custody. With Murray finally under interrogation, detectives must work fast to discover the whereabouts of Father Renee, alive or dead. Did you ever know there been 21 guns, people? Hmm? Any been 21 guns, people? I've heard of them, but I mean, I'm, I'm, I don't, I don't, I don't I think know. they're starting out. Yeah, I don't know. I don't even get in that gang shit, man. I'm some little pussy, man. I hide behind something, you know. One on one, I'm dragging the shit out of their ass. I mean, I'm pretty good at fighting. I mean, I've fought my whole life. I mean, for you to beat me, it's because you a bad son of a bitch, you know. I mean, I, I, I ain't bad, but I'm just tough, you know. I mean, I'm real, real tough, and you just ain't gonna hit me and lay me down, you know. What I mean, you gonna have to really beat this cracker right here, you know. It's gonna really beat me. <laughs> it's not your first fight. Yeah, I mean, you really gonna have to beat me good. <laughs> if, if you can beat me as bad as my daddy used to, then you might be able to win. Is, I, is he a big guy? Who, my dad? He's probably about maybe your size a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, my daddy used to beat us. Uh, he beat well, us. Well, no. seven years old, man. It's, it's no. Yeah, I mean, I'm gonna tell you, my daddy used to fucking man, there's ain't no word for it. I mean, Beatings he used to give us. What do you think ought to happen now? I think I think he needs to be tied up somewhere and tortured to death. The detective takes this opportunity to ask Murray what he thinks should happen to his father, gauging the depth of his hatred for him. Repeatedly raped, beaten, and abused by him, Murray had one of the most depraved upbringings a child could ever suffer leaving him little chance of ever turning out quote unquote normal. I think that's what's gonna happen. I mean, I think that's only right, you know, just because of the people that he had hurt and how he had hurt them. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm literally watching they beat somebody to death for the hammer. Well, I don't know. You know that problem. What I'm here? Yeah, you're making. How long ago? I mean, that's some years ago. I was young, I was very, very young. He left a man on the power lines. Beat him to death. I mean, when I said beat him to death, I mean, you beat him to death with the hammer. Over, over some money. Card game. 
You don't need to tell. I mean, it you sounds like you're mad. <clears throat> Man, you know this. That's what I feel like sometimes. You know what I mean? I don't know. I lose control of myself sometimes, you know. It's like I can't, I can't control myself sometimes, man. I, mean, I choked my sister out, duct tape, bro, put her in the closet. I mean, didn't mean to, didn't know I did it, so I did it. You know, so what we get? Crystal. Crystal. The detectives are discovering that he just goes into rages that he can't control. Murray is saying over and over when he goes into a rage, he can't control it. It even feels good. Well, they'll use this information later in the interrogation to allow him to feel he can talk about the events that happened without him taking the full weight of responsibility for his actions, as if he has no control over them, in the hopes of leading him into a confession. Four times. She was, I don't know, I mean, I was, I was in the early 20s. She was probably, probably 18, something like that. Do you think it was learned behavior from your dad? I don't know, man. I just lose myself sometimes, man. It's like, for me to do this, <clears throat> and I don't, I don't know what makes me start. I don't know. It's just like, fuck, can I just get caught up in it? It's like fucking a rage, man, where it just makes me feel so good doing it. It makes me just feel like a fucking... Man, I can't even fucking explain it, man. I mean, fucking, that's loose control, you know. But did you get like that when you're doing when you were doing drugs, or is it just, no, it's just, just that? It's just me. I mean, it's just me. I mean, I, I drugs don't have nothing. Nothing has nothing to do with it. It's just fucking. It's just there, man. I, mean, I try to stop it, and I fucking you can't, man. I mean, it's like a fucking just in your fucking head, and it's fucking just. Yeah, was yeah, I mean, I just lose control. I mean, I can't, I can't control it. I mean, I can't control myself. I can't, I can't have nothing with it. I mean, do you feel like yourself when you're doing it? Or is it like you feel like an out of body? Like an out of body, man. I mean, it really does. Man. I mean, it don't even, it don't even. I know it's not me. I know it's not. I mean, I know that's not me. It just happens, man. I mean, I can't fucking stop it. I mean, it's like fucking just. Happens. What's the worst thing you do? What triggers it, man? What's the trigger? I don't know, man. I mean, the detective takes the opportunity to ask Murray what's the worst thing he's ever done, but it's too soon. And so the second detective jumps in to keep the flow going, asking him what he thinks triggers him. This way, the focus is still on getting him to stay open, like they are genuinely interested in his feelings, allowing him to talk about his depression, and, again, the incident with his sister, where he doubles down on his story that he doesn't remember doing it. I don't know. I really don't, man. I mean, just, I get depressed sometimes, man. Even that my sister, man, I get, I get really, really bad depressed, like, really, really bad. Don't talk to me, don't come around me, don't, don't, don't nothing to me, you know? I mean, I, I get real bad depressed, I can stay in the room for days, stay by myself for days, I'm not talking to nobody, and that's usually where it starts at, man, I just make bad decisions from there, and I can't, it's like I can't, I can't stop myself sometimes, I mean, it's like I go in and I don't, I don't, I don't stop until I'm done. Sometimes I don't even remember. Sometimes I just like, it just happens and I don't know what the fuck I did. Like my sister, I don't, I don't remember that. Although Murray has said that he doesn't remember the incident with his sister, he goes on to recount the details and wants to show the detective his remorse in an attempt to show that he cares about the people who love him, even when they don't seem to care for him anymore. I mean, what do you think when you found out? I mean, I believe it, but I don't know, I didn't remember, like, me physically doing it, like, no, I mean, I know. Yeah, Bubba, you know, they stayed the fucking, I lasted four charges behind that. Do what? They charged me for that. Took my sister out and up, taking her up, stuff her in the closet. So I took her out, like, four times, so she pissed that shit on me. I thought I choked her. 
I used to hold a duct tape on her and everything. <sighs> you so <still> fucked <talk> up? <clears throat> Somewhat. I mean, we don't, we're not close. We're not, you know, we're not anything close to love, you know? Mm-hmm. I mean, she never forgave me. I never forgave myself, you know. How's that answer? Did you ever forgive yourself? I never forgave myself. I didn't mean to. It sounds like you've had a terrible life. The detective sympathizes, saying, Sounds like you've had a terrible life. And Murray becomes reflective. The detectives use this opportunity to encourage him to open up. They want him to feel like they're on his side and listening. The only thing that really helped me was syrup glue, because it kept me to sleep all the time. I wanted to wait long enough to make bad decisions after to sleep. Sometimes just talking about it helps you. I tried talking to my boy because I ran out of breath. Who did you talk to? I talked to so many counselors, man. I talked to so many mental health counselors. And I even talked to a counselor that had been raped before. Somebody that could relate to me. I spent years up in prison. You know, counselor, 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 you know, switching up. Just looking for that one counselor that I feel like I can relate to. You know, somebody that I can see something in. You know, I don't know. Seems like nobody understands enough to actually help me, man. But I want to see the start. For, for somebody to start helping me, I would first have to help myself by letting things go, you know. And I don't know, I mean, I. Just, well, sometimes it's hard to let things go, but you know, you got to work at it slowly. It slowly. And like, like I say, talking is it's good. You know the process. Um, it says here you have to follow the rights under the United States Constitution. You do not have to make a statement or say anything. Anything you say can be used to ensure in court. You have the right to talk to a lawyer for advice before you make a statement or before any questions are asked of you. And to have a lawyer with you to question you. If you cannot afford to hire a lawyer, we'll only appoint it for you before any question and if you wish. If you do answer questions, you have the right to stop answering questions at any time and consult your lawyer. Do you understand? I understand. Are you willing to talk to us with this rights in mind? I mean, what are we talking about? Well, we're, we're here and uh, we're conducting an investigation and uh oh, Father Renee. Oh Father Renee. And we need your help to uh try to find him. Try to find him. Okay. So with this rice of mine, if you're willing to talk to me, can you sign here? I'll tell you what I know what happened, what you know, what's going on. I mean, it was, I mean, Anybody else give you guys any money? Any money? Yeah, to help you all out. Father Renee gave her so much fucking money, man. I mean, it was fucking ridiculous. I mean, it was fucking ridiculous. I mean, you know, he gave me money too, you know. I mean, so I can't, you know, I can't say nothing. I mean, but man, he gave her fucking tons of money. Like, whoa. <laughs> how, how often did he give her money? Every day. Every day. Why did he give her so much money? I don't know, I mean, you know, he, you know, I mean, it, you know, it wasn't nothing that I was mad about or anything, you know, I mean, because he was saving me money, you know, I mean, didn't matter to me, you know, I mean, it was okay, you know, I know she wasn't fucking him, you know, I mean, he's an old guy, you know, I mean, old fella, I mean, I, mean, I know there wasn't nothing going on. there's always, yeah, but I mean, that's, I mean, you know, that was the last thing on my mind, you know, I mean, I, I wasn't worried about that, I mean, what do you, you think, think she was playing him? No, I mean, yeah, she, she was, yeah, she was playing him in a lot of ways. And I tried to tell Father Renee, I told him so many times, man, but what was really going on. I, I personally, personally, like I said, I told him. What'd you tell him? 
I go, she's got a problem, follow her name. She, she, she shoving needles in her arm with the money that you give her, you know? But he's constantly calling me, you know, telling me, you know, he, you know what I'm saying? Because I would give him father and money every week, you know what I'm saying? Paying him back. I was giving him fifteen hundred dollars a week, you know, you know what I'm saying? Whatever I can afford that week. I was giving him money, you know, and just pay some of the money back that she was getting. And it never amounted to what he was giving her. He was giving her probably between two to four hundred a day. How do you afford that? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I'm supposed to be before. pious and poor yeah. when you're in the priesthood. Yeah, I mean, I mean, he, he definitely forking out some money, man. I mean, he, he was right out of the gate. He gets caught in a wild exaggeration with his tales of how much money Father Renee was giving his girlfriend, again Ashley Shreve, every week. Maybe someone with his background can't do the math when it comes to a real job. Well, it's money, but but you know, she played him in so many ways, man. I mean. Like this phone situation, <laughs> this guy named Jeffrey that he, well, I think he was helping out that was in prison. Mm -hmm. Father Renee had his phone. Well, Father Renee let Ashley hold it. Ashley lost it. And she used that phone so many incidents. So I'm getting money from, oh, I'm going to get your phone back, but I need, I need $200. You know, the person, the guy that said, I can't get it unless I bring $200. Oh, and then give her two hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. He give us a ride down there, and she go get her dope and come back and say, "Well, they said they couldn't. They wouldn't give me the phone, you know. They took the money." Father well, and they would just fucking drop us back off and leave. I mean, like so many times. Did he act angry? No, not at all. I mean, he would slap the steering wheel and do like that to her, you know. And you know, like, did he know what she was doing? He didn't want to believe it. It's not that he didn't know. I told him several times, several, many times, man. I sat down and told that man that what was going on. And I mean, hers actually broke up several times over. I mean, because of me telling him, you know, she, why are you trying to fuck my husband up? Why are you trying to, you know what I'm saying? And I just, you know what I'm saying? I just wanted her to do right. You know, I wanted her to straighten up because I really do love her, man. I mean, I, I love her from the bottom of my fucking heart, man. We've just listened to Murray try to convince the detectives that not only was Father Rene a pushover, but that his girlfriend was a hustler, and that in the midst of all this, he was somehow the good guy. In fact, just a guy in love with the wrong girl. And he appears smug with this train of thought. He's just a guy in the wrong place at the wrong time, right? Is that how you met Father Rene through her? That's how I met Father Rene. How do you meet him? See. Me and her got together, and she was like, look, you know, I want to tell you something. I said, okay, you know, shoot for it. You, know, you can tell me anything. And I said, look, I got this guy. He gives me money. He's an old man. He's a priest, and he looks out for me, you know. I said, okay, you know, that's cool, you know. That's cool. And she said, you want to meet him? I said, sure, you know. I mean, if he wants to meet me, I'll meet him, you know. And that's cool with me, you know. I mean, I didn't, I didn't have no problem with it, you know? I mean, hey, you giving her money, you helping me out. <laughs> Saving me money, you know? <laughs> I mean, let's just be serious. I mean, I'm not the one forking it all out every day. I mean, I can keep money in my pocket. <laughs> so, <clears throat> he came over, I met him. I, I actually took him out to eat. I took him to Bono's. I took Father Renee and her to Bono's right there on Lane Avenue. We sat down and I had a couple of drinks and I actually talked Father Renee into having a drink. I didn't, I didn't have to talk him into it. I offered offer him a beer. I said, would you like to drink a beer with Father Renee? He said, mm, no. Nah. Then I got my beer and opened it, and I chugged it, and I ordered another one. He said, oh, I have one, okay? You know, that beer. How long ago was that? Uh, let's see. Probably a matter of four months, maybe? Mm -hmm. Maybe four months. Uh, um, me and Matt here, you know, we talked and, you know, I told him what was going on, you know, me and Ashley was having some rough times and I was having a rough time dealing with some of the things that she was doing, you know, and, you know, we was talking to Father Renee about it, you know, and asking his advice on, you know, he was a priest and, you know, I felt like, you know, he wouldn't give me no wrong advice, you know, so she didn't want me to ask him about it, you know, she didn't want me to ask his advice, but I did it anyways, you know, because I felt like, you know, he, you know what I'm saying, if I could get any good advice, it would come from him. Mm. You know, he's got a lot of wisdom, you know, he, he's over, you know, so if I could get any good advice, it would come from him. So I asked him, you know, and he, he gives good advice, you know, he told us to take it step by step, you know, don't, don't rush into anything, you know, 
which we had already rushed into it. I mean, I went from no owner to living where, you know, was her living with me. I mean, I mean, it was, it was a rough thing. But can I ask you a question? Your father and Renee got, kind of stopped coming around once you actually went to prison? Yeah, he never stopped coming around. How did he treat you? Always treat me good. Uh, what respect. And, yeah, he was always a good man. I mean, he was always helping me. The detectives know that after his girlfriend went to prison, Father Rene was not so eager to show up for Murray's requests of money and rides, and are now watching for his reaction to the suggestion that's what was happening. Murray with his pitch of voice getting higher, insists this was not the case. After all, he needs the detectives to believe that him and Father Rene remained tight as thieves. Always, you know, I continue to give him money every week. Even though I asked who's calling, I still gave him money, you know, mm -hmm. just because I feel like he was the right thing to do because he helped us so much, you know. I mean, he didn't help me, but, you know, he did because he was giving Ashley money, you know, so he did help me, you know what I mean? <laughs> He took a load off my back, you know, I mean, he took a big load off my back. Was he coming back and forth to, mm -hmm. to Jackson on St. Augustine? Every day. Okay. Every single day. Like, every day he was there. And, you know, the man had my most respect, you know. And then, uh, where, where, where were you meeting at? It was me. Mm -hmm. He'd come to us. I mean, and every day. Were you living in the hotel at the time? I was living in the hotel at that time. I mean, everybody at that hotel knows Father and the Emmy because mm -hmm. he's up there so much. I mean, the room, he's usually paid in his name, you know, his credit card. He he would give us the card, you know, like most of his cards, I know the numbers to him. I mean, I know a couple of the credit card numbers. I know uh, the credit card numbers he used. 32084 is what he used at the gas pumps or something like that. His um, Wells Fargo is 1921. His Bank of America is um, 09. One eight, I think. I mean, because, you know, he used to just give them to us. I mean, give them to us, you know, the number. Murray has admitted that he was in possession of Father Renee's credit cards. This information will become crucial, as you'll see later. I mean, I, I, never, I, I, I never asked. I mean, you know. You ever been to his place? No, never been to his place. No. Okay. Do you know where he lives? No. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know, I don't know where he lives. I know he stays in St. Augustine. Mm -hmm. his, his, the road he lives on is fucking, um, I was writing him because he was sending me and asking his letters back and forth and I was locked up because, you know, he can't write him, make him me. So I would mail Ashley's letter to him and he would mail it to Ashley. That way she would get it and Ashley would be the same. It's just like, you know, his address was Moultrie or something like that. I ain't sure, I mean, it was something. I, mean, I got it written down somewhere at the house, you know. I was right. I mean, I've never been to this place. When He's never been inside his house. Or no. Does he have a house apartment? I don't know. That's apartment because on on the address, apartment twenty four. Mm -hmm. yeah, the address. Do you know how to get there? No, I don't know how to get there. Do not know how to get there. When was the last time you were in San Augustine? Oh, uh, a couple of days ago. I was just there riding around. You know, I was just riding. I didn't have nothing else to do. I was just riding. Were you riding in his car? Yes. Okay. When did you get his car? Uh, I can't think of which day it was, but me and Father Renee was riding. He was taking me down out past Chafee to meet somebody. He didn't know that I was going to meet somebody for some weed. Which I the detectives know that Murray was also in possession of the priest's car. And they got Murray to admit to this to be used in evidence later. That because you know he's a priest and he's got a lot going on, and I wasn't, wasn't going to tell him that, you know, because out of respect. I mean, and we went out past Chafee right there with a fucking, uh, I think it's a kangaroo right there at the corner of Chafee and uh, Beaver. Yeah, on the other side of the highway? Yeah, right there, and there's a kangaroo. We went out past there. I was supposed to be meeting the dude at the kangaroo right there. Mm -hmm. I didn't know. He fucking called me and told me to meet him somewhere else. So I asked Father Renee if he was staying right here for a minute. You know, Father Renee usually does that. You know, he'll fucking, like, actually fucking drop him off at the Walgreens and stay gone two hours and leave him sitting at the Walgreens for two mm -hmm. hours. Like, I don't know why the fuck this man keeps doing that. You know, like, why the fuck you let him, let this girl do that to you? You know, that's what I kept asking him. Like, you know, why you, why? I mean, why? 
I told him plenty of times she was on drugs, you know, she was a new user, fucking shit like that, you know, I'm like, why? You know, he just kept doing it. I mean, I didn't want to argue because it wasn't coming out of my pocket, you know what I mean? I know, but still. Still, you know, it was wrong, and that's why I told him, you know, that's, that's why I went to him like a man, you know, and told him what was really going on, you know? I mean, it wasn't like I had a problem shoving he was a mom and stuff. I mean, you know, it, you know, it wasn't mine. Murray is again making sure to paint himself as a saint while deflecting with tales of his girlfriend's manipulations of Father Renee. A completely irrelevant diversion from the day in question as she's obviously in prison. Perhaps he thinks if he confuses the conversation enough, the detectives will become as confused as he seems to be by this point. Well, you were confirming about it? What confirming about what? About him giving all that money to that shit? No. No confirming. I mean, I never had a problem with it. I mean, hell, you helping me out. <laughs> I mean, you know, you just took a load off my back, you know, and that fucking 300 you gave her today, you know, helped me out because I didn't have to come off of it, you know? I mean, I mean, I've never complained about it. I mean, and you know, I mean, and, you know, so it never was a bad thing for me. I mean, I've always looked at it as a good thing because I mean, it, you know, it helped us out. I mean, even though I mean, I'm, 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 I mean, I was doing all right. I mean, I wasn't, I wasn't doing bad. I mean, I, I wasn't. Even when I was doing bad, I still had a couple hundred in my pocket, mm -hmm. and I kept that, you know, because I had a standard. You know, I, I wasn't going over less than a couple hundred in my wallet. Mm -hmm. I mean, you gonna forget that, you know? I mean, I'm not going past that. Like, I asked, you would, you would try to get me to fucking spin, spin. Oh, come on, let's just sit down. Like, no, I can't do it, you know? I got Because, you know, I'm not going to go to work and climb trees all week broke. Okay. Lunch, when it's lunchtime, you know, I'm going to buy me something to eat. When I'm thirsty, I'm going to buy me something to drink. I'm not, there's no habit strong well, enough you, to make you, me you work. You work for it, you earn it. That's right. I mean, you know, what, what happened out on Shafi? I dropped him off, and I never came back. I mean, I, I, I ended up doing drugs, mm -hmm. and I never came back and got it. And that's how I got his car. I mean, I never, never came back and got him. I just started doing drugs, man. I was about what time did you drop him off? It's probably nine or so. At night? Yeah. On Sunday? I'm not sure which day it was. I mean, I went in. Yeah, it's probably, it, it was late, I mean, I'm not sure what day it was. I'm really not sure. I mean, it was, it was late, and I started using drugs, man, and it was like fucking, I just, I mean, lost, lost myself, you know, and got stuck. Yes, you could say got stuck, most of all got stuck. And by the time I realized what I was really doing, man, it was fucking hours, hours later, like fucking four thirty, five o'clock in the morning later, you know, like six o'clock in the morning. I'm like, oh shit, I'm in trouble, you know, I shouldn't have did that. And it was too late, you know, so I just fucking kept the car, you know what I mean? I know that, that the police is probably looking for me for it, and he's probably done calling the police, and I was scared, you know. And, what did you do after that? Fucking just drove and drove you know that. Yeah, everywhere. <laughs> Where's everywhere? I mean, <clears throat> all over Jacksonville. Fucking went to South Carolina. St. Augustine. Um, I just fucking rode around everywhere. I was scared. I mean, I know that I was in trouble. I know that I should have took him his car back. And I know that I was wrong. I was dead ass wrong for doing that. And I felt bad, but I know that it was too late. You know, I mean, it was too late to turn back or try to make anything, you know what I'm saying? But it was too late. I mean, I shouldn't have did that. I knew I was wrong. I don't understand why you would think just stealing a car is so wrong to go down. The kind of things that you said to your sister, or the kind of things that you said to him and stuff like that. Well, There's because, more to it. Well, because I was at that point of I'm just being done with everything, man. You know, I, mean, I, I know, but you, you, you stole cars before. So, I mean, it's just not a, it's just have, a property, I mean, I, I mean, I ain't, I, ain't, I ain't stole a car from somebody that has helped me out so much and somebody that trusted in me so much. Somebody that would do anything for me. And I just failed them. I just let them down. And that's why it meant so much to me because this person has, has did anything for me. And this person has helped me out to the extent that where nobody else would. I could call this person and say, hey, I need $200 for the name. 
What do you think he is right now? I don't know. Murray again and threatens to shut down. So the detective returns to talking about the virtues of the priest and how good he was to Murray. This way, circling back around to reduce Murray's tension and return his thoughts to how kind Father Rene had been to him. People looking for him, and it's important that there's a closure for what happened to him. If I, if I understand that, I mean, if I had any help for you, I'd, I'd be more than happy to help you. I, you're the last person I saw, and I think you can help me. Well, I mean, no, I can't. I mean, so if you're going to keep on trying to dig at me, that means I got nothing to talk about. I mean, I told you what I had to tell you. I mean, you know, digging's not going to get you nowhere. It's just going to put you in a hole. Mm -hmm. and, because you're going to dig yourself in a hole and you're not going to be able to see me no more to ask questions. I mean, it's, I mean, that's just it. What do you mean? I mean, you, you ain't getting nowhere. That's, that's what I'm telling you because that's it. That's what happened. But it was, would you drop them off in front of the store, behind the store? And down the road past the store. I told you that. Drop them off past the store. I thought it was at the kangaroo. I said past the kangaroo. Okay, going in north? From going down the beaver, like you, you going towards the kangaroo from the beaver. Like if you going through McDuff and you keep going down beaver, down past that way. Ah, that way. That's why I thought I'm off there. Okay. I could show you. I mean, hell, we get in the car right now. I could show you. Well, you can't do that. I mean, I mean of course, the ways I'm off. Yeah, I mean, of course. So it's somewhere in Marietta. Yeah, somewhere right now. I mean, I got. My, I mean, I'm not real familiar with that area, but I mean, I I know that area. Mm -hmm. I mean. But I mean, that's it. I mean, that's that's what happened. I mean, is he okay? You I mean, asked me. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I mean, hell, hell, I know. You know, he touched a lot of people. Um, he helped you big time. He was helping time. Ashley, and uh, you know, there's a lot of people looking for him. There's a lot of people worried about him. Um, you know, we we haven't heard from him since you were the last person who saw him. And uh, you know, there's there's a lot. This man, he touched a lot of lives. He touched my life. I mean, I mean, I mean, he really did. I mean, he was a big help to me, and that's why I felt so so ashamed of what I did. You know, what I mean. I just left this man standing there, you know, out in the middle of the cold, you know, and didn't mean to, didn't intentionally do that, but the drugs, you know, I mean, the drugs, you know, once I, once I got done to get the weed, it's like, just, you know, I ended up getting cracked. Didn't, didn't mean to, didn't want to, but I did, and I got stuck, you know, I and mean, the crack got me stuck, it just made me, just real paranoid and I was fucking just stuck right there in that one spot, you know, and I didn't realize it. And so I was coming down like to fucking like five, thirty, six o'clock that morning. I was like, oh shit, you know, what the fuck I did. Did you ask him for money? Mm, I have a few times, but no, not that night. No, not, no, not, not did he give you anything? Hmm? Did he give you any money? Mm -hmm. That night? No. No, he didn't give me no money that night. No. But I mean, he had to give me money before, you know, to help me out. I mean, like, when I first got out of jail for that driving, you know, I mean, he gave me, I think, 40, 45. Western Union, you know, Western Union. Matter of fact, you go look at Western Union records, I mean, and see where he is. Yeah, I know that he'd give, he'd give you money before. Yeah, I mean, he's, I mean, he has, I mean, a couple times. He's Western Union money in my name. Ashley's like, golly, if you go to the Western Union on hers, you know, you probably see about forty, fifty thousand off with the Western Unions. I just don't understand I had so much money. How long how long he went to visit you every day and say earlier? Yeah, he was he was he he was around about every day, man. I mean about every day. So I didn't mind, you know. I mean, here we go out to eat, we you know what I'm saying, we talk, you know, he come over. I mean Ashley's actually fucking like pretty much fist fall in front of him. I mean, like with him sitting right there, I mean, she slapped the shit out of him with him sitting right there. Now let's watch as the detectives take Murray back to the beginning of the day in question and start to ask him more detailed questions about the sequence of events again. This technique is used to catch a suspect out in his own lies, as it's hard to keep a lie consistent when you're being asked the same questions but from different angles. How will you feel if something happened to him where you dropped him off at? 
If we wanted to find them dead or alive to bring them some closure to the people that are looking, where would we look? I would help you. I mean, I would show you why I dropped them off that I told you that. I would show you. What was he wearing last time you saw him? I mean, he's asking a lot now. I mean, it was just a couple of days ago. Yeah, but that's still a lot. I mean, I've had a lot happen. Was he wearing his thing? I don't know. No, he, no. Come on, dude. What? Collar, I guess they call it. Is it Russell? Nah, I couldn't honestly tell you what he was exactly wearing. I know he always wears his fucking sandals. I mean, he always wears his sandals. Mm -hmm. But it's the open toe sandals. I mean, he always wears them. Like, what? Well, what time did you last meet? Or did you call him? How? How did? He, what happened there? What did he come to see you? Did you call him that day to go get the weed or or whatever? How did that happen? I think I told him, I think I was going to give him some money. I think so, yeah. I think I was giving him money. So you called him? Um, well, I think so. I think so. I think I called him and told him that I had some money for him if he wanted to go get it because I wasn't able to pay him, you know, because I was locked up. You know, mm -hmm. and I had just got out of jail and I hadn't got up on my feet to it yet to pay him some money. And I called him and told him I had him some money. Where do you think you have that? I think he picked me up right there by my dad's. But I'm off of Beaver Street. Off of Beaver Street. Okay. And he picked me up. He picked you up in the yard. He picked you up on the road. How did it go? Um, I think he picked me up in the yard. Okay. I'm not. Yeah. I like, man, I'm, man, I like smoking on the cigarette, man. I ask him a lot of questions. And well, this, this is what we're trying to do. Seems to be working as Murray starts to feel the pressure and says he needs a break and to go smoke a cigarette. That's not going to happen. Up until now, the detectives have played a mostly passive role, just listening to Murray and allowing him to weave in and out of stories, leaving some questions open for them to return to, all while paying attention to his inconsistencies so they can go back to these later in the interrogation, therefore leaving more chances for him to trip himself up. It is time for the detectives to change tactics. They know that Murray's getting tired, and they start to up the pressure, asking more specific questions and picking up the pace, making him go back over details that they've already covered. Now they have his full attention, as he must think more carefully about his answers. Obviously, he wants to get them right. Honestly, he... We're trying to... The, the reason why we ask this question is we're trying to find out exactly where we need to go to try to follow up the last steps that we, we need to find this man. Um, I never met him. I don't know who he was. Um, but from what I've heard, even from you, he doesn't sound like a bad person. Um, you know, our job is to bring him, you know, find him, dead or alive. I mean, he might be out there. He might need some medical care. He might need something that, you know, we need to try to, I mean, if, you you said it yourself. He's a good man. We need to we need to try to bring him. We need to try to find him. And what I'm asking is, I'm asking your help. Any piece of information that you can give us, so that we can go look and try to find, can help us bring this man that did so much for you, according to you, bring him home. Okay. That's no, I mean, I'm answering every question you asked, I know. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I mean, so, I mean. Yeah, I appreciate, I appreciate you doing that. I mean, it's, it's just one of those things. So when we're asking that information, we're trying to get specific information that we can go to those locations and try to find, yeah. you know, what could have happened to him. Well, so I'll get me back to Jack. Yeah, I'll be able to help. I mean, I mean, because, you know, he's sitting here explaining it. Probably ain't gonna what do you think? Well. Is he dead? I mean, I, I couldn't tell you. I mean, I mean, personally, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I mean, I couldn't tell you if he's dead or alive. I'm gonna tell you if he needs help, medical help, or nothing, because I don't know. I mean, if he is somewhere out there still alive, it's getting to be a couple of days, and we need to know where he's at so we can help him. 
something I could do to help you, you know what I'm saying, do that, I would, I mean, like I said, as soon as I get back to Carolina, I can show you how exactly. Do you, how do you call them that day? Do you, do you, have, a, do you have a phone? I've, I've had phones here and there off and on. I always end up throwing them out the window or something, because I get tired of phones, you know I mean? I've never, you know, I got locked up, man, I had the flip phones, the Nokia phone, the antennas you pull out, and then you got a big ass fucking smartphone, you know? <laughs> I mean, that's some fucking big ass phone, man. Yeah, I thought it was TV, people walking around with <laughs> So when when you say you drop them off around that, that gas station, I'm not I'm not from Jacksonville. I don't know Jacksonville that well. And the gas station there that you say you drop them off. If we were to go over there and pull sorts surveillance and uh most of those gas stations have cameras. Well we'll see his car with you and him in it. No, we didn't pull in the gas station. I said we went past the gas station. That was out of that. Well, I just told you, right? We went past the kangaroo. Okay. So I far past that. Huh? So I mean, I would have to show you. I mean, you know, I'm not that. Is there sure. any line markers or anything? I'm not sure. If you looked at the map, would you go to control? Mm, it, was, it was dark outside, so I mean, you know, if I was gonna give you an accurate, like I would, I would actually have to be riding in the car. What well, did you see that happened to him? Huh? I mean, he just asked that, and I just gave you an answer. You know, you asked the same questions, expecting a different answer. You know, that's the definition of insanity. Yeah, you do the same thing, expecting different results. You ask the same question, you just ask me how I go. You know the same answer. No, I, the first time I asked you, we you, were talking about. I said that we wanted to bring him back if it was alive. You said, yeah. "What do you think? He's dead or alive? You think he's okay?" Well, I, I, I don't know. That. <laughs> you guys, I want to go to. You got any of his property? Um, I think I do. What do you got? And credit card. How'd you get those? It was in the car. Okay. Anything else? Whatever, whatever was in the car. I mean, it was in the car. Then, yeah, I mean, is everything that you that you had in the car ooh, still in the car? Uh, I don't think I throwed anything away. I mean, I didn't. I didn't like tear the car apart and throw anything away or anything like that. Okay. I mean, I mean yeah. I mean, everything should still be in the car. What's all the cigarette, man? Y'all, I mean, I mean, y'all got my nerve to a slap up, man. Asking all these hundred thousand, hundred questions. No, oh, we're just talking, man. I don't know. Do you want to get a cigarette? Yeah, yeah definitely. Then we'll come up back in here and talk some more. Definitely. All right. You see, do you see where we're at, though? Yeah, I mean, definitely. Yeah. I mean, definitely. I mean, I definitely understand everything. I mean, I, I mean, you know, I'm not, I'm not blaming y'all, saying y'all wrong or anything, because you know you're exactly right. I mean. Mm -hmm. You know, bringing a man back home would be the ideal thing to do, you know? I mean, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I did what I did, you know? I mean, it is what it is, you know? Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, I mean, I felt bad about it. I did. I mean, that was that was a terrible thing for me to do, and I know I shouldn't have did it. And, but, you know, like I say, sometimes, you know, we all make bad decisions, and that was just having to be one of them, you know? Mm -hmm. Did you think... At this point, they allow Murray to have a break, showing sympathy towards his need to smoke and take a breather, allowing them to reestablish that initial connection with him, showing that they understand his situation and make him feel relaxed again. This is a classic technique to get him off his guard. Star? Yeah, a whole lot better. Like, there's none of the, like, the star, fucking, these places are even make the star like a fucking trash dumpster. Mm -hmm. I mean, Way better. What kind of stuff's going on over at the store? Man, what ain't going on? It'd be easy to tell you what ain't going on. <laughs> mm -hmm. Bunch of stuff. I mean, drugs, a lot of drug dealing, heroin, prostitution, a lot of stuff. Did uh, Father Renee ever have any issues with going over there? No, I mean, he, I mean, he would have never had no issue anyways because I'd have beat anything that had an issue with him, you know. Mm -hmm. I'd, I'd have heard anything that stepped in the way of Father Renee. I mean, I'd, I'd have heard anything. I mean, anybody that gave him a problem, I would hurt. I would destroy. I mean, 
So he would have never had a problem nowhere, man. period. I mean, as long as I was with him and I was there. <clears throat> and everybody knows that, you know. Everybody at the store knows me. I mean, I knocked a couple of them out at the store. I mean, flatlined a couple of them. Yeah. Um, you know, you said you you and Father Renee went to the uh, kangaroo. Yeah, I didn't say that. I said we went past kangaroo. Okay. Um, before that, you said that he let you use credit cards and stuff. How long had that been going on? Couple months. I mean, I, I actually have a um, a phone number that I can give you, and you can get the phone records from it, where he would text us the credit card numbers. What was what was his phone number? His phone number? Yeah. Nine zero four six one four zero eight zero two. And the other phone number that he used to text us all the numbers to was nine zero four four hundred. Man, you probably have to call my sister and get it. If you give her the first, the first couple of days, Bobby King. yeah, just tell it was the four hundred, the Galaxy number, and um, uh, all the records is on there where he would text us the credit card numbers, the the amount that we could spend and stuff like that. You know, I mean, all that's on there. I mean, I actually threw that phone out the window because me and her was arguing because she kept erasing stuff. You know, I would catch her erasing stuff. You know, and I already told her, you know, I said, you know, you don't, you know, you don't have to hide nothing from me. You know, you can be honest with me because I'm just that type of person. Mm-hmm. I would rather if you be honest with me and then versus me coming and find some find a lie. You know. I mean, that's what I would consider myself sometimes, man. I mean, the things that things that go through my head and, you know, man, if I, if I carried out everything I thought, I mean, it would, it, would, it, would, it would be bad, man. I mean, because so many things go through my head, man, like, just bad. What was the worst thing you ever thought of? Probably... so many bad things, you know. I mean, I don't know. I'm getting tired, man. I mean, Do you ever think about killing somebody? No, I mean, I don't, I don't just, just want to kill somebody just to kill them, you know, especially not somebody I love, you know, somebody that's there for me, somebody that's, you know what I'm saying, going to help me. I mean, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, kill them because that would be biting the hand that feeds me, you know. Did you love Father Renee? I had a lot of love and respect for Father Renee. I mean, mm-hmm. a lot. I mean, because he he was there when my sister wasn't. You know, when I could when I could call my sister and she would tell me no bubble, you know, I can't you know, like I got out of jail this time and I called my sister. She was who I can depend on, you know. And I was, I was down. I mean, I was, I was where I didn't want to be. You know, I was depressed. I was, I was real bad down. And I said, you know, can you help me? You know, she said, I can't do that, boy. I can't help you. And then I called Father Renee. Father Renee said, go pick up a Western Union, or I'm going to bring you some money. I'm on my way right now. Mm-hmm. And of course, I had a lot of love for Father Renee. I mean, he was there when nobody was, you know. I mean, when when I couldn't depend on nobody else, he was there. I mean, so yeah, I mean, I did have a lot of love for Father Renee. He ever betrayed you? No, never. Never, not even, never even felt it. I mean, never even, you know, that's something I didn't have to worry about. He was a good, honest man, straight up, straight forward, straight going, you know, I mean, he was, he was that, that type of person. Do you feel like you betrayed him? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I definitely do. I mean, me, me leaving him standing there, and, you know, for that long, that long of a period of time, yeah, I mean, I do. I mean, I feel like I was wrong for that. And Have you tried I to call him to apologize? No. Why not? Because, I mean, I was just, I felt bad. I mean, I felt ashamed. I felt, I felt like, 
you know, after all this man did for me, you know, why did I do that? You know, he, he's a man of the cloth. If there's anybody that's going to forgive you, it would be him. Yeah. Don't you think that would? Well, I mean, you know, all that wasn't going through my head at the time, you know. I mean, I wasn't thinking of that. I mean, that's not something that was on the top of my list of thinking, you know. But you had a couple of days to think about it. Days, yeah. Did you ever go back out to that area to look for him? Uh, I went back down that way, but he wasn't there. So, and what? I was, I was scared, you know. I mean, I know he probably called the police on me, and you never know. <clears throat> never did. I mean, what I was thinking in my head, you know. I mean, this man's gonna report his car stolen, and like I was just. Do you think the car was stolen Tuesday night? I mean, I thought the car was stolen from the whole, whole get-go, you know, I mean... You know, Is that why you I took off? I didn't take off. I mean, you know, when you took off? I mean, I mean, I mean, I came to South Carolina, I mean, that was it. What day did you come to South Carolina? I don't know. I mean, I let somebody, I let a dope dealer borrow the car for some drugs, and I got it back from him. I'm not sure. I can't. I can't even give you an exact date. But Where'd you meet the drug dealer? <sighs> Stone Canal. Which one? All the way down at the end, uh, yellow orange looking store right after you left, right across the road from Yuli Street. Yuli and Canal. Yeah, Yuli and Canal. What was his name? They call him Mike, Big Mike, or something like that. I ain't sure. At this point, it looks like Murray's losing his grip. He starts to tell a wild story about a drug dealer named Big Mike and lending someone the car. He was on too much crack to remember the details. The detective uses his mobile phone to pretend that he's distracted for a moment, but he's actually giving Murray a pause to think about the credibility of the story he's trying to tell. Murray bows his head, indicating defeat, hoping for the moment to pass. The detectives know that Murray's feeling a little less confident at this stage, and that he's struggling to keep up with his version of events. I mean, it is hard work giving the same answer to the same question every time. What do you look like? Big, ugly. What kind of hair do you got? Dreads. Long or short? Uh, it's hard to judge because he kind of keeps him up a lot of times. What was he wearing that day? I'm not sure. I mean, I don't. I just kind of try to remember what everybody wears, you know? Yeah, what time of day was it? I'm not sure. I mean, I was probably on drugs and mine somewhere else, you know? I mean, I don't, I don't, that's not something that I keep up with. I mean, but I did, you know what I'm saying, rent the car out for drugs and, I mean, it wasn't my car, but, I mean, I figured it was already reported stolen, so, you know, what could it hurt me, you know what I mean? What did he give you for it? And give me 80. 80 hard? How much crack you been smoking? Like when? Like since all this stuff started happening. No, no, but I mean, it wasn't like I've been out there for days smoking crack or anything. I mean, it wasn't. Sorry, my wife keeps calling. <laughs> what do you think if Father Rene had put you in a situation that you could have? What do you think you would have done? Do you think he would have called you and apologized? I don't know because I can't judge the next man's feelings, you know, how he feels or how you feel. I don't know who you are or what you're capable of. You know, I know you seem like a good man. But I also know everybody has a different side to them, you know. Everybody's two sides. We were told about that earlier. You know, everybody, you know, just because you think they're good, don't mean they're good, you know. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? They could be good but bad. They could yeah. be bad but good. You know, you never know who you deal with. You know, just because he's a preacher, don't mean that they're going to kill you or rob you because anybody's capable of anything. That's Do you think it's true what they said about Catholic priests? I don't know what they say. You know what they say? Oh, about messing with the kids? Yeah. I don't think that. I think that's the case for anybody because anybody's capable of anything. But would it just be in about the Catholic priest? No, I don't believe that. You think Renee's probably capable of that? 
No, Renee's definitely not capable of that. I mean, Renee's a good man. I see nothing but good in him, and I mean, I, I hate that I did that. You know, I hate that. I mean, I, I feel really bad for that, and I wish I hadn't did that. I mean, you're a good man, but you've done bad things too. I have. So, you know, Father Renee is what he was. You know, not making a judgment on him being a good guy or a bad guy, but we all have skeletons in our closet. That's correct. We've all done things that, you know, we shouldn't have done. But, you know, Father Renee seems to do a lot of spend time with, you know, people that the rest of the people in the clergy probably wouldn't. Agreed? I mean, Say have you been to church? You've been to church before, right? Uh, Did your pastor ever come out and give you money? I mean, there's no way that this guy had that much money to give this stuff. That's, you know, that's <laughs> pastor in the biggest church in the world isn't going to have that. You're supposed to be leading a pious life as a pastor, as a priest. I mean, you know, I mean, it is. I mean, you know, it was a lot of money. I mean, and he did give a lot of money. I mean, but as far as me questioning where the money came from or him having the money to give, no, I never questioned that or anything because, you know, I mean. Did Ashley see him as a sucker? She didn't. I mean, she, I see that she, you know, she, I don't, I can't even say that she really cared for him, you know, just because. How would you? I mean, I mean, of how, I, I try to tell Father Renee so many times. I mean, why would you care about like that he's a mark for her? Why would I care about no, that? I mean, why would she care? I mean, I, I mean, I care. He can't about respect somebody that's to, you're taking all that money from. No, he like definitely, she is. I mean, definitely not. I mean, you know, and I, and, and I told him several occasions. I mean, me and her just broke up. Couple times. Let me ask you this: If he wasn't a, if he wasn't in the priesthood, and he was just some regular schmo, what would you think of him? Sucker. I mean, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I mean, he was benefiting me, so I wouldn't. Yeah, but I mean, I wouldn't cast that judgment on him. He's a sucker though for giving all that money to somebody for nothing. I mean, I can't say that. I mean, I, I wouldn't say that because, first off, I mean, I don't, I don't cast bad judgment behind somebody's back. You know, that's not something that I can come to your face and tell you I wouldn't. I'd tell him to his face, you're a sucker for, you know, just giving people money. But if you look at Western Union, man, if you could pull the Western Union up on... I, I 100% believe that I mean, he sent you that stuff, 100%. I mean, there's there's probably thousands and thousands of dollars on Western Union. Has he ever bonded you out? He was going to bond me out when I got locked up. Me and Ashley was driving. I got locked up for my first driving, when I, no, second driving when I was out of driver's license here. And... Him and Ashley came down to bond me out, but they are and are. I didn't have to have no bond. So you ever bond her out? Uh, I'm not too sure. I mean, I really ain't. I mean, I can't. I can't. I can't accurately say that because I don't know. I mean, what would be your best guess? I don't know because I don't know how many times she's been locked up, or she's been locked up one time or two times. I mean, how many times she get locked up when you guys were dating? Never. Besides this one time, she went to prison. I mean, how'd she end up now in St. Pete? I think she met this guy named Tom or somebody. Tom, I think I think it was Tom. He's he's on the bond. I know that. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, but she was with him for a while, you know. And him and her broke up, and that was when me and her got together. After all that happened with the, her getting kicked out of the truck for not having sex with the dude, she had left that. She had left Tom that night, and. Went to a party, you know, she broke up with Tom, went to a party, and that's when she got drunk, and this dude tried her, and, you know what I'm saying, ripped her clothes off and throwed her out the truck, you know what I'm saying? I mean, that's when all that happened. I think Ashley said father, and they gave her, like, in one year, $40,000. There ain't nobody in the priesthood before that. No. I don't know. I mean, I wasn't mean, Not prepared. unless they're I'm tapping in the till, mm -hmm. you know? None of my business, you know what I mean? I know, but, but you've been around, you, do you agree? I don't know, I don't know, I mean, you know, I can't, I can't judge, I mean, I don't I'm not asking know you to judge, I'm just asking you to be a reasonable person I mean, and think that nobody short of somebody like Donald Trump is going to be able to give somebody 40 grand. Well, did this man work his life? Did this man retire? Did this man, you know, I mean, you know, you got like down the you know, 401k. You know, you have to think about stuff like that. You know, what did this man do for a living? You know what I mean? So therefore, me saying, oh, this man ain't got that kind of money, you know? I he drove his way, though. I mean, it's just you live in an apartment. 
it's okay though. That might be why he had that kind of money. Yeah, he improvised, you know. I mean, he improvised. Yeah, you know? I mean, he, improvised. <laughs> yeah, he improvised something. It's just he. Uh, have you ever been to his place and stayed the night over there? Y'all didn't ask me that one time. Was that? Y'all asked me that one time already. If it's been the night at his place? Y'all asked me if I've been over to his place and I gave y'all an answer. No. I asked if I haven't been over there, if I know where he stays. I said, no. It's the same answer. No. I've never had. What was your reason for going down to St. Augustine? I go down there. I mean, I work in St. Augustine. I did jobs in St. Augustine. I mean, I just wanted to ride. I mean, I was riding. I mean, Do you see where that would make us concerned now? I mean, I've been down there several times. I mean, I mean, it ain't, I mean, like I, hey, let me go to St. Augustine, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? No, I mean, I, I did jobs in St. Augustine, plenty of jobs. I've worked in St. Augustine more times than we can count on all our hands. The detectives start to coax Murray into submission, letting him know that at this point, the facts are immutable. They will put it to him, however, that there could be reasons beyond his control for things that have happened, things that they're willing to listen to. Maybe he has a reasonable explanation. This is an attempt to lure him into feeling maybe what he's done isn't so bad. Maybe someone would understand if he just explained his reasons. At this point, they surprise him and bring his sister into the conversation by phone, increasing the pressure on him to tell the truth. And you see him physically start to submit. These tactics are common practice in the interrogation room, and they get results. I, yeah, I've been down saying I've seen much times. But think about it, if you were sitting in our chairs, what would you think? That's in what? I mean, it's kind of weird that you were down there at that time with all the totality of the circumstances. You know, yeah. you, you understand what we're, what we're concerned about, right? Father Renee. Finding him, you know, hopefully alive. And then go from there. <laughs> we talked to a lot of people and everything, and it's, it's it sounds like you just had a really amazing, stressful week with everything that's happened and everything with the stuff you said to family. You know, you called the, when the police were over at your dad's house Tuesday night. Do you see where we're coming from? See why we're not going to debate about the car issue? Yeah. I mean, there's there's got to be a reasonable explanation for everything. You know, mistakes happen, bad things have happened, good things happen. But like you said, sometimes you're not in your right mind. And if that's the case, then we can deal with it. You know, it's it's what it is. You know, like the, we were talking about earlier, man, people do good things, people do bad things, but when it's time, the the best people to do the right, the right thing. thing. Time, you know? And I mean, what I want to do, y'all want to do the wrong thing and tell y'all a lie. I mean, is that what y'all want to hear? I'm going to tell y'all a lie. I don't want to hear no lie. I want you to tell the truth. I mean, I've been telling all the truth, but you know, y'all ask me the same questions over and over again, expecting a different answer. I mean, well, that's some things that we don't think you're being truthful about. Yeah. No, but I mean, Opinions, you know, opinions like assholes. Everybody's got one, you know. That's true. Yeah. Everybody does have an opinion, you know, and I can't, I can't fault you for having an opinion or a title or whatever, you know. But I told you what I need to tell you, and if I won't continue to ask the same questions, and I don't think there's nothing else we need to talk about. Well, we're not asking the same questions, but there's. Let, let me let me tell you this: If you were sitting on this seat and I was sitting on that seat, and you have me. Father Rene, you, you you told us earlier today that you called him on Sunday so he can give you a ride to buy some drugs. Okay, I can't, I can't, I can't say exactly what day it was. I didn't say Sunday. I said I called him and told him that I had some money for him because, and I, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I did a little work and I got a little money and I called him and told him, said, I got some money for you, you know? I mean, I don't, I don't, I can't tell you exactly what day it was because I don't know. I don't, you know, I don't keep up with it. Well, you know, you have his car. That's the same car that uh, you crashed over here. That's the same car that St. Joe's County Sheriff's Office chased you. And you told one of the officers. They chased me. Well, one of the, you spoke to one of the JSO officers after the fact and you told them that 
you you have the uh, police chasing you, and it was about twelve cars. Okay, so you said that to him. So you have his car. We haven't heard or seen him since. How does that look? Mm, I understand. How does that look? But just because something looks some way, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's and that's, that's, that's what we're trying to refer. It doesn't look good. That's what I'm trying to tell you. It does not look good. This man is missing. He's probably up there. Maybe you're telling the truth and telling that he was dropped off over there and that he walked in the woods and something happened to him out there. But I don't think that's accurate because this man, he has a cell phone. Okay, if you left him out there, he could have called the police, he could have called somebody, but he didn't call nobody. You see what I mean? So, there's a lot of things here that are not adding up. If you have a phone and I take you out in the middle of nowhere, out there on Wide Road, and I drop you off, what are you going to do? If I'm sitting there waiting on you and you never show back up, what are I'm you probably going to find some other way out. I mean, yeah. I'm gonna, what are you probably going to do? I'm probably going to call somebody to come get me. Mm -hmm. so right. wants, Bobby wants to talk to you. Hello. What's up, girl? keep asking me the same questions and keep giving them the same answer, but they think I'm lying. So I think I'm probably probably about to be done talking. I mean, because I'm tired, I'm ready to go lay down. Why did they think you're lying? I don't know. They keep fucking asking the same questions and expecting a different answer, you know? But I mean, I'm giving them the same answer. I mean, I'm telling them the truth, though. I mean... Yeah, they are. Uh... Unfortunately, I can't, you know, I'm sitting here and I'm handcuffed and shackled down here. I want some clothes and let me go. Um, I love you. I love you too, girl. You doing all right? See on TV. Murders and all. 
take me back to the jail, lock me up, put throw me in a hole somewhere and cover me up and just, I mean, cause, I mean, I'm not getting nowhere here. The only thing I'm getting to do here is smoke cigarettes, you know, but hell, that ain't, that ain't benefiting me, you know, I mean, I mean, hell, if they throw me a pound of crack on the table, you know, we might be able to fucking come up with something, you know? <laughs> You know, I'm just saying, big pound of crack on the table, you know, I might, I might be all right. <laughs> oh, man. You're crazy. Okay. Like the police is going to give you a head crack. <laughs> <laughs> wow, bro. That was a plan. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I will. I'm always, I'm always gonna be here for you, honey. I know, baby. Hey, it is what it is, you know. I mean, I can't tell them what I don't know, you know. So I yeah. don't think I can tell them is what I do know. I mean, yeah. uh, I, I, mean, I, I told them. It is what it is. I mean, that's why, you know, you gotta be there for a little bit anyway. So I didn't see, you know, if you, well, from what you told me yesterday, you know, I figured you told me all of that, so why not tell me a location? You know, Jean. it just seemed a little odd. Jean, so. I, Jean, I've been up three days. I mean, I've been up three days and I talked to you and I was skitzed out and fucking, I mean, I fucking, I was, I was wigged out. Yeah, I figured you was out there. We were gonna come get you, but you never responded to me, and a lot of them come for nothing, you know? Yeah, it's because the SWAT team rolled up behind me, and I had to give them a hell of a run. <laughs> yeah, you told me that, and I seen it on the TV. So I knew when they started, when all that popped on the news, so I was and then you called me a little while later from that free twenty seven seconds. Yeah, that's what I was saying. The police said I was singing on TV. against me and not for me, you tell them I said fuck them, okay? Okay, I'll tell them. 
Hello, you coming back? <laughs> oh, Look, girl, I love you, and you keep your head up. You know what I'm saying? Regardless of what happened, you know that I love you, and you hold that in your heart forever. Okay. Make sure you tell everybody I said fuck them, okay? Will you promise me one thing? What? You're already there. And no matter where you are, I'm going to have your back and I'm going to be there. Yeah. If you know, if you know anything, don't leave them to where this man is. Please tell them. I'm telling them everything okay. I know, okay? Just think about if that was me out there. If I was Father Renee, how would you feel not going if I was dead or dead or alive? And that's how his family's doing right now. I'm and, not they won't bring you home. and I'm trying to help him. I mean, I'm trying. I'm giving him everything. I promise. I'm yeah. giving him everything I know. Everything I know, I'm telling him. Stay truthful with him, okay? Don't bring this man home. And that'll go a long way for you, too. And like I told you, don't you ever think that I'm not here for you because I'm always here for you, baby. Don't you ever think that I'm not here for you, baby. Okay. Okay. Murray appears defeated. His eyes are lowered, but he's not ready to tell all yet, despite the detectives presenting him flat out with the undeniable facts. He says he wishes he could help, but he really doesn't know anything. And besides, he could never hurt someone he loved. We know from his history Murray caused grievous harm to both his sisters throughout his youth. His claims that he's not capable of hurting anyone he loves have already been proven untrue. Man, what's up with a cup of coffee, man? I don't need to admit. I see a good man in you, believe it or not, or, or whether you can or not, I see a good man in you, man. This is difficult. You know, sometimes we make a lot of mistakes or snap with the things that we shouldn't have done. And uh, things get crazy. You know, things get crazy. You got family that care for you. You got a Roberta that cares about you. She called and she wanted me to let you know that she loves you, okay? You got your family, you got Bobby Jean that cares a lot for you. There's a lot of stuff that, you know, we do at times that we're not proud of that we don't really want to talk about that you don't want anybody to know. You don't want people to think something that you're not. There's a lot of things that we have to think about. And uh, those things 
sometimes you just gotta face it. It doesn't matter how scary it is. It doesn't matter how bad it is. Sometimes you just gotta face it. That's reality. You can't change that. You cannot change who you are. I cannot change who I am. But there are those people in this world that try to do good things. I don't know if Father were there for what he told me. It looks like he was one of those people. Yeah, it's a good man. Right? Yeah. It's a good man. I don't, I never know. I never met the guy. We're just out here trying to find him, dead or alive. We're trying to make him back, you know? I understand that. So, you know, people, sometimes people respect you when you do the right thing. And like I said, we do things that we're not proud of. Okay. You feel bad because you're driving his car. I'm pretty sure you're not proud of that. Are you? No, I'm not. I'm not. I mean, I'm very sad. You have kids. What What do you want your kids to know when they grow up and try to find out who their father is? You know they're going to find out. You know all they have to do is Google it. They have their last name, don't they? Mm -hmm. Right? So you signed that date of birth, right? That's right. Okay. So you know what they're going to do when they grow up? They're going to Google that crap. And they're going to see Stephen Murray. It's my dad. Okay. How do you want them to remember you? In a good way. Okay. You want them to remember as a man who did the right thing. When yeah. time was tough, right? That's right, but you know, me sitting there telling y'all a lie would be doing the right thing. I mean, what do you want me to tell you? I don't want you to tell me a lie. Well, if I keep, if I tell you anything else besides what I'm telling you, it'd be a lie. I, listen, I think you know a little bit more than what you're telling me. And I'm, I'll be honest with you. I think you know a lot more than what you're telling me. And maybe you're not, you're not telling me or telling Harold over there when he was here because it's something that you might not be proud of, you know? We know that something happened to Renee because that man, he has a phone. He's always on social media. He's always telling people where he's going, okay? He hasn't been in touch with anybody, okay, since the last time that he met with you. So there are things that we do that we're not proud of, but... At the end of the day, if you do the right thing, it really doesn't matter, you know? That's life. That's what we have to face every day. That is life. I know something happened to him. And it was probably something bad, wouldn't you agree? He could be alive and well somewhere right now. He could be on vacation, for all I know. I mean, he hasn't Come told on. me anything. He hasn't told y'all anything. So, Come therefore, on. we all don't know. I mean, I don't Steve, know. Steve. <laughs> Come on now. I mean, I'm just, I, I'm just, I mean, I'm, I mean, I'm just looking at the logic of the situation. Yeah, I mean, I mean you're looking at logic. Just because, just because, you know, I go, hey, I went a month without calling. I've been years without calling. I've been a year without getting calls. I mean, but does yeah. that mean, does that mean that, I mean, yes, yeah, I'm well, good. not the man Father Ren is. I tell you right now, I had tons of people call me trying to find out what happened to this man. Where's this man at? He's always in touch. Every time he goes out, I'm trying to tell somebody. Okay? Okay. Every time he goes, I, have, I know people, I have some people that have seen you with him. You okay? Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm, I mean, I'm always around Father Renee. I mean... Well, you got arrested I, yesterday. What did you have? You know what you had. You know what I'm talking about, right? What? The credit cards. Yeah, I told you they was in the car. I mean, they was in the car along with all the other Do stuff. Do you think he's going to go on vacation without his credit cards, without money? I mean, I can't it help that the stuff car. was in the car. I mean, the stuff was in the car. The stuff was in the car. When I took off, the stuff was in the car. So, yeah, I had it. I mean, it was in the car. This is the moment the detectives catch him. 
Murray was caught in possession of Father Renee's credit cards, which were in the priest's car Murray was last seen driving, alone. It's obvious Murray knows that Father Renee has not gone on holiday. You know, it was his property. His property was the car, and it was in the car, man. So, I mean, yeah. I mean, you know, When you I mean, left his man out there, were you alleging that you left him out there? Did you left him with his phone? I don't know what he had. I mean, the phone was in the car, as far as I know. Did y'all search the car and find it? I have a look at the car. I've been over here with you. So, I mean, I don't know. I, mean, I just I got, know. I, like I, I told you earlier, we just got here. We went and picked you up in order to talk to you. Because you said a lot of things yesterday, man. A lot of things that were a lot of people that do care for you. I don't care if your dad cares for you or not. I don't. I never met the man. I have not talked to that man. I know. I can tell you, it's an animal from what you've told me. It's a freaking animal. Okay. So you have the one, the one person, the one person that's done some good for you missing. I hope you find him in any way I can. I told you that. I, I, and, I, and, 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 I and I'll take you to where I dropped him off at. I mean. I wasn't gonna let the man ride with me to go pick drugs so, up. Of course, I mean he he always does that. Was he hurt when you dropped him off? No. Could you hurt him? It, you you just told me that there's sometimes just not that you hurt people. You don't remember? Could you do no, something no. like that? I no, mean, no. I mean, no, I don't think I would do anything like that to somebody who who cares for me that much. I mean, no, I couldn't. I mean, because I'll make you an animal. You don't want to be an animal. No, right? I don't want to be. I mean, I'm I'm telling you what I know. And if it's any help to you, then by God, I hope it is. But, you know, anything in addition to that, you know, if you want me to tell you anything other than that, it would be a lot. Okay. So you take that and you sleep on it, eat on it, whatever you got to do. I mean, you know, y'all, y'all sitting here pushing and getting me nowhere. I mean, I, you know, I want to push you. I'm not pushing you, man. I'm not pushing you. I'm just telling you what, how things are. You know, I'm not pushing you by no means. I'm not trying to push you. I respect you as a man. I respect what you've told me. Okay? I hope that I've treated you with respect, the respect, respect that you expected. Okay? When your sister gave you my number and you called, okay, I respected that. I mean, I, was, I wanted to see what was going on. You know, they told me that Father Renee was missing, and, you know, y'all just thinking I had something to do with it, so I was like, yeah, you're, that, you're, yeah Well, you just admitted here a few minutes ago you were the last person to see him. You have his car. I didn't you, say I was the last person to see him because well, you have when I dropped him off, I mean, you know, I mean, there ain't no telling. Man. Well, uh, nobody else calls us and say there's a priest walking around here. I think, I think it's been a long day for all of us. Later that week, Stephen finally confessed to the murder. I just kept my mouth shut. I'm riding, you know, and Father Renee is talking to me and telling me, you know, you're never going to get away with this. You know, you're never going to get away with this. You know, and I had no intent to go murder. Mm -hmm. No intent. You know. Was he still in Trump? Yeah. I'm in that spot where y'all got him from, you know. And, I backed up right there and he said, yeah, use the bathroom, you know, so I was going to lock me in the bathroom. Mm -hmm. I made sense of this, you know, but you can't, you know, the damage is done. And I just really hope y'all kill me for it, you know. One week later, Stephen James Murray was charged with the murder of Father Rene Wayne Robert after finally confessing to his crime in detail. The district attorney initially planned to seek the death sentence for Murray, but in a preconceived act of kindness, Father Rene had written into his living will and testament that should he ever be murdered, he wished that his killer not be sentenced to death as he was a strong opponent of the death penalty. A true believer in forgiveness.